Same guy that made me go gluten free, and this is why I want. To, <laughs> this is why one might want to go gluten free or consider to be gluten free. So, do you want to speak to that? Okay. Um, yeah, I can get boring too. I've got a degree in molecular biology too, but the structure of not just the wheat itself, but the gluten in the wheat has changed so much over the last 50 years that people that wouldn't have been reacting to it are now reacting to it. Oh. It's got new protein epitopes it never had before for your immune system to trigger on. It's causing not just an immune reaction or an imbalance in inflammatory response, it's actually causing autoimmunity too. Those immune cells are, and antibodies are seeing similar type structures in our own tissue and they're turning around and attacking you instead of just attacking gluten. And if gluten's a regular occurrence in your diet and you've got chronic inflammation going on, your immune system is not perceiving it as a nutrient, it's perceiving it as an infection. So the more antibodies you get built up, the more immunity you have to it, but it can't actually kill the gluten. It thinks you've got this constant invasion going on. And did gluten ever, was gluten ever a good thing? Because I remember seeing, you know, beneficial or gluten as a beneficial commodity sold at Whole Foods back in the day. It's a large globular protein, so it's not real easy to break down anyway. But the gluten that was in the ancient wheat was much easier to break down. And it didn't have the new structures in it that it does now. It, With all this genetic modification. Yeah, it wasn't as immunogenic. In fact, you, I've got patients that are you know, very easily demonstrable for their gluten intolerance. I mean, they'll get welts. And they can go over to Europe and eat more ancient type wheat and not get the same reaction to it. And it's, it's what we've done to the wheat. We haven't changed that much. It's the structure of the food that changed. Right. Because when I was in Istanbul, I was eating, you know, that white French bread that was just sure. zero. Yeah. It was and I've got patients that say, I'm going to France and I'm going to eat some pastries. So Dr. Meyer, tell me, tell me what I need to do. And, it, you know, I'll recommend some enzymes and some things to keep inflammation down. But those are things that they were doing anyway. They go over there and they, they realize that it's, it's very obvious it's different. Working here in Austin, you get to see the... Uh, patients from India, from China, from uh, South America, from uh, places where they eat more ancient type wheat on a regular basis. Some real food. And they come here and I have to tell them you can't do that anymore. And it's hard to believe at first until you, it, you look at the research. If you just look at the structural changes, it's, it's all predictable. Oh, that's so sad. But if you, if you look at the research, it's mounting every year. And we're doing other ridiculous things like spraying food crops with Roundup, which is definitely accelerating things. Yeah. So the, we're confusing the heck out of our immune systems, which we're meant to tell self from non-self to, you know, to recognize invaders. All the things they're supposed to do, um, they're getting confused. We've got food that's inflammatory enough that it's busy taking care of that and um, and the normal recognition that it's supposed to do like pathogen uh, it, it's not doing a good job at that anymore so we're getting more infections we're also getting more allergies um, environmental seasonal sure more confusion uh, immune system so reactive and you had said that it takes a good two months eight weeks right to get gluten out right. of the system. That's just to clear the acute inflammation from the last gluten that you ate. So if you tell people ahead of time, hey, it takes, it's gonna be eight weeks before you clear the inflammation from that, you know, that last bite of a cookie that you had, they've well, got, a, they got a chance at least. Let me, let me tell you one thing. I had one boo-boo. I was going through HEB about a month ago and you know how they hand out the little samples and they had some ice cream and I took a bite of the ice cream and there was something a little crunchy in there. I said, what's in there? And they said Oreo. So I had a tiny little trace of that. Okay. Now it's going to take another eight weeks to clear that. Right. You're not completely at ground zero, but yet you get some, inf you will get inflammation from that. And it's going to take another eight weeks to clear that. Right.
and you're clearing those autoimmune antibodies, the antibodies that I was talking about to the gluten, mm -hmm. for you can be clearing those for up to a year and a half. Good heavens. So what that means is you can't reintroduce gluten once you feel better. Right. And I had, um, I had spoken with a number of people, especially younger people, and thinking about Pete's son, Jeff, was going, oh, don't be ridiculous. It doesn't matter if you have a small amount. And I said, no, I, I, I believed that. And I fought with him <laughs> the first time. Yeah. And, and he just basically said, okay, if you're going to do clabbered dairy, that's fine, but no gluten, zero, yeah. zero. And be careful that um, there's not a cross-contamination, you know, in the plant where you're getting the corn chips that also manufactures wheat products and stuff, that it's that sensitive. And it is important time. Huh? No, absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, I've been in a restaurant where you know, somebody ordered a salad and it came out with croutons on it. Mm -hmm. And they, they told them, I'm sorry, I can't eat that. Um, and I watched as the the, the server went back and knocked the croutons off and brought it back. I said, you can't do that. There's still enough gluten there just from wow. it being exposed. And the person at the table knew it. That's why they said that. Um, but little things like that can happen when you go out to eat just because people don't completely understand right. that it literally just takes a few milligrams to inflame you. And you may not feel it that same meal. You may not feel it till the next morning. And what does it feel like? How would you identify yeah. that? If somebody's having the symptoms in their GI tract, it could be cramping, it could be loose stool, it could be constipation. It could okay. be very individual. A change in the stool yeah. is a good idea. If you've got psoriasis, your psoriasis could flare up. If you've got arthritis, your arthritis could flare up. Okay. Um, so it's... It could be a slight headache. It could be wherever your weak link is, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And it could be different from every family member. Right. Uh, my wife's family had lupus, scleroderma, arthritis, diabetes, um, psoriasis. It's probably one or two I'm missing. They all had completely different presentations, completely different chronic inflammatory and autoimmune conditions, but it was all the same root cause. Oh. No so, wonder you went into the business. <laughs> yeah. No wonder you got serious about it. My this. wife's never had 